So what do you think of when you hear the word conflict? Try doing an image search on the word conflict and what comes up is probably what you would expect. People yelling at each other or refusing to talk, fists and anger, clashing and fighting. Many of us hear the word conflict and we go straight to the extreme, an argument, shouting, or perhaps the silent treatment. The reality is for most of us, this is what we've experienced when it comes to conflict. I know personally it wasn't until later in life that I've tried to intentionally manage conflict. And believe me, it's been a learning process. So let's be honest. Generally speaking, conflict is a bad word. Conflict has a bad reputation and for good reason. Unmanaged conflict in relationships and teams brings down morale, it's counterproductive, and can even be destructive. Now when it comes to understanding and managing conflict effectively in working relationships, the same underlying principles apply whether you're co-located or working remotely. The big difference is in the practical realities of the virtual environment. The potential pitfalls are unique and so are the options for action. In this course we'll be emphasizing principles and strategies for managing conflict when you are involved. That is, when it occurs in particular one-on-one -on -one working relationships with a remote colleague. There are three objectives we'll be focusing on. First, we'll reframe conflict from an inherently negative to potentially constructive reality. Second, we'll examine the particular challenges that are presented by the virtual context. And third, we'll give you tools and strategies to diagnose and then treat conflict. That is to assess the underlying cause and identify options for addressing the right issue in the right way. Throughout the course, I'll be asking you to think of real life situations where you can apply these principles and strategies. So what conflict situations are you currently involved in or do you know you need to address at some point? When I ask that question, most of us will think of quite significant, if not enormous, relational conflict issues. The confrontation I know I need to have with my boss, or a very awkward confrontation with a colleague, or a very personal and emotional conflict with a family member. The risks and emotion involved in these major conflict situations are indeed enormous. It's no wonder we have such a hard time stepping up and intentionally trying to manage these conflict monsters. But what I'd like you to do is not only consider the major conflict situations you're facing, but also the more subtle misunderstandings and miscommunications. So grab a piece of paper or a notebook or use your keyboard. Make a list of the conflicts that you're currently facing or that you know you need to address at some point. Chances are the more significant conflicts and breakdowns will come to mind first. But I also want you to add the less significant misunderstandings, disconnects, or miscommunications. You might not even call these conflicts, which is fine, but precisely because they are less significant, these situations offer a great opportunity to build your conflict management muscles. You can make that list in the workbook on page 4. Then on page 5 and 6, rank these situations from significant to those that you consider more minor. Try to think of situations across that spectrum and at the bottom of page 6, list what steps you can take to address the relatively minor conflict situations first. You don't walk into the weight room and immediately pick up the heaviest weights on the rack. You'll pull a muscle or throw your back out or worse. You start with the weights that you know you can handle and you build from there. As we go through the course, I want you to refer back to this list of conflict situations and consider where you can apply these insights and strategies to these various conditions. I'd like you to focus on the relatively minor conflict situations first. These are your opportunity to build your muscles. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed and intimidated by the major conflict situations. Yes, those do need to be addressed at some point and you'll get there. But start by applying the tools and strategies from the course to the less risky situations where your likelihood of success is greater. I want you to practice using these ideas to build your muscles and strengthen your virtual conflict management skills.